in air so she can see I'm here. She catches a glimpse of your hand, looks towards you, and her eyes light up in recognition. Klaus! She uh, starts walking quickly towards you. When she gets close, she lands and whispered, Is... 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 She... Yes. Yeah, she's here. Okay. Alright. So... Uh, any particular way uh, you want... Uh, could I speak to her? She says. I'm... And I so speak out loud. Work. I speak out loud. I can hear everything you say, dear. She smiles softly. Uh, is there any uh, way you want to do this? I told him that I wanted to introduce him to an old friend. I thought saying, Hi, your dead wife is back and she's a ghost probably wouldn't go down well. True, but, uh, I mean, Rhea, I'll be very honest with you. I don't remember him. I barely remember you at all, and I'm terribly sorry. It wasn't my intention to forget you, I promise, but it is the case. What is his name? She's, uh, she does look sad for a second when she hears that, but then she looks at you and says, John. John Ambrose. Well, I guess something has to balance out novella. <laughs> yeah, that Why is your was... name novella and your name Storia? That was from... And she does smirk a little bit. Your side of the family. Yes. It's, oh, uh... uh, give me a second. Uh, what was, what was it? Rossicum, that was it. Your maiden name, your maiden name was Rossicum. Rossicum. All right, it's good to know. All right. Whew, let's see how this goes. It could go terribly, just like it did with our latest friend. You sound so joyful about the idea of it going horribly. That's called uh, sarcasm, boy. It is faking it until I make oh, it. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right. So, you make your way over to the Ambrose Estate. It's a small house, a two-story, two-story building, and Bell, sorry, Rhea knocks on the door. Dad, Lena, Dad, Lena, we're home. The door opens and you see a tall woman with curly black hair open the door. She's got brown eyes. She looks at you with, at Rhea with a warm smile on her face. Rhea, and she looks at Klaus. Ah, this must be the friend you're so excited to introduce us to, she says, <laughs> with a bit of a knowing intonation on the word friend. <laughs> Klaus is oblivious. So he's just like, Hello. Rhea conceals a bit of a frown of face. Um, sort of. Is Dad home? Oh, he's just in the lounge room. Uh, young Klaus. Oh, by the way, what is uh, out of character? What is Coram doing in 
Karm and Kun doing? Are they with everyone? Or? Yeah, that yeah, they are. Kun's just observing, you know, just in. Right. He's just staying, just in case any, and he's listening very intently for anything, just in case anything goes south. Wait a second! Uh, I thought you guys were still with Whisper. That is what I thought too, but then I realized yeah, I might well, have been making an assumption. I'm pretty much not there at the moment, so. Well, I'm I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving Klaus. So. <laughs> All right. So yep. Corb is with Whisper. Good luck with that. And Coon is with us, apparently. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, she's looks at. Uh, young man, is there anything you like? And then she looks up and she realizes uh, Kun's there. Uh, is he with you? And Rhea kind of looks back at Kun and says, with a hint of a reluctance in her voice, Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's, uh, he's my, he's, uh, his bodyguard. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, sir, would you like to come in? I would, thank you. All right, uh, please make yourselves at home. Uh, would the two of you like anything to eat or drink? <laughs> I'm afraid we're not exactly the most wealthy of people, but I'm sure I can uh, cook something oh. to the best of my ability. Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, I have to meet my family after this, and knowing them, they're going to stuff me. Of course, of course. I'll make something light for you. A small sandwich, perhaps? That can work. Thank you. Of course. Do you, uh, do you eat meat? Yes. Okay, cool. I believe we have a bit of chicken in the, uh, I believe we have a bit of salted chicken that we can use. So, you make your way into the house. It is a, again, it's a fairly small area, but quite charming in its own way. There is a small t Now, Rhea seems excited to actually take uh, clouds and everything. Uh, do you mind if I uh, show you my room for a second? It's, uh, I don't know, it just would be nice for you to see around the place. I am asking that from Bill on, on the back of my head. Like, do you want to see it? I mean, she heard what Rhea said. Of course. Yep, Cl Klaus just knows. Sure. So, Rhea gives you a bit of a tour of the house. It's only got two bedrooms and a, kitch a kitchen and a dining room which are connected. Rhea's the master bedroom is in the upstairs room, and Rhea wisely decides that taking the uh, class up to the master bedroom before introducing you to the family might raise a few eyebrows, but she does show him her room, which has been set up mostly as a workshop. A bunch of uh, chemical bottles, uh, lab equipment, alchemist equipment, all over the place, as well as, and this is something that's interesting to you, Val. On her bedside table is a wooden carving of a very familiar looking knight. Fascinating. Rhea? Yes? Where did you get this, dear? Uh, get what? The knight, the carving. You made it for me. It, when I was young, you there was this... There were these stories that you'd always used to tell me. He, he, she guesses at night. He was always the hero in them. When... On my, uh... Sixth birthday? You made that for me. Hmm. Well, he certainly has been hero during, during our travels. I... That's interesting. I apparently can summon him and have him fight for me. <laughs> I don't, maybe 
Oh, maybe when... Uh, and she lowers her voice. Maybe when you die... Maybe when you died, you could... Pull them out of the world of dreams? Maybe... I, I can't remember... If, I, you never told me it was... was I mean, you told the stories as if they were real, but I don't know if they really were true stories or if they were just tales that you told me. I don't know if you, you know, if you heard them or just made them up. I don't suppose you remember. I don't. Your guess is as good as mine. Perhaps your father will know. By the way, uh, Klaus, you kind of hear, sort of. You can hear Vel's voice kind of prickle. Who is the lady with the long black hair? Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's well, if you my step- right now, I will scream! <laughs> she's my stepmother. Her name's Lena. She is, uh... She's a merchant that my dad, uh, he met her about, uh, ten years ago, I'd say. Hmm. Kuhn looks around. Did it get colder in here? <laughs> How long ago did I die, Ria? You died when I was seven, so twenty. I suppose that is a sufficient enough amount of time. Anyway, so uh-huh. <laughs> you, I don't even, you, she, you doesn't, she doesn't even remember him and she's already getting mine. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which you hear a cheerful male voice call from downstairs. Rhea! I hear you've got a friend over. Mind letting me mind letting me meet him before uh, you abs- you and he abscond into your room? We made a <laughs> we The Ambroses might not be strict traditionalists, but we do still have standards. Klaus just blinks at this. What do you mean by that? Oh dear. <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> never, uh, never mind, Rhea says. Coming, Dad! So, yes, the two of you. So, yes, she leads uh, the two of you out of her room and into the dining room where you see a, av- a man of average build, uh, red hair, and. A little bit of a stub on his face. By the clothes that, by the clothes and tools around his belt, you can guess he is either a carpenter or perhaps even a stonemason of some kind. Either way, he's definitely some kind of builder. I wish he looked familiar. Do you say that out loud? No, just to Klaus. Uh, hey, uh. Dad, uh, this is, uh, Klaus? Ah, yes! He goes to shake your hand. Well, I'm gonna give it- I'm gonna give my hand in that case. You- You must be the- you must be the friend that, uh, my daughter's been telling me about. She seemed quite enthusiastic for me to meet you. Um, about that. And then he looks at Rhea for a second. I am actually not the friend, I'm friend of the friend. I'm yes, here for yeah. a very good reason, you'll understand in a moment. Yes, uh, what is it? and uh, John looks up and he sees Kun. How old is Kun, by the way? Uh, he's, he looks, he looks like a, he looks like a young man. <laughs> okay. So, like, around Rhea's age, maybe. Okay, good, because I was going to say, if... The impression I got from Kun is that he looked like someone who might have been in his 30s or 40s, and that would have gotten a bit of a glare. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my apologies. Uh, I'm, my name is Miss. My name is John Embrace, and you are Kun. Kun Pleasure to meet you, Kun. Uh, uh, Dad. Uh, yes, dear. Um, 
he's actually not the friend either. Do you mind if we all take a seat? In fact, you uh, you might need to. Are uh, you okay, dear? I'm fine, just please. Trust me you on this, we will need the seat. You? you aren't pregnant, are you? No! Just... <laughs> <laughs> You, you see, you, you see, you see, Coon just kind of like swallow uncomfortably. I... <laughs> I... Uh, I'm sorry, but if anyone is carrying another person inside of them and therefore pregnant, it is Klaus. Uh... <laughs> I know, but it's nah. So you don't say that in character, but several, but about a. Um, well, a good few, uh, several hundred meters away, you suddenly feel a wave of loss upon you, as if an opportunity for a joke screamed out and was suddenly silenced. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. Well, if you start calling me a mother, I will yeet you out of my body! I don't intend to, dear. <laughs> Harder, mommy. <laughs> I Sorry, Jeremy, that's a joke from Brony D and D, and just. Sit them down. Okay, glad to know you can speak a foreign language. Speaking of which, um, Rio mumbles something that you're not quite sure is English. What was that, dear? I sort of. What was that? I I can't be pregnant. I haven't even been with a guy. Now please sit. <laughs> so what do you all do? Do you all take a seat? Uh, Kuhn, Kuhn's fine standing up. <laughs> Klaus? Klaus is gonna stare and look a little bit awkward because he's just a vessel right now. Klaus, you can sit down. So, once Klaus, Rhea, and John are seated, Rhea takes a deep breath. Okay. Mum? You can come out now. Oh dear, this isn't going to go well. She says that out loud. Okay, so first John raised an eyebrow at the mum, and then he his eyes go wide as he hears that voice coming from nowhere. What do you do? I sigh, and I don't physically manifest, but I mostly, instead of floating upwards out of Klaus, I step out from behind him, so that I'm standing behind Klaus with one of my feet still sore, with one of my hands on his shoulder, so that I'm still anchored. And your appearance, how does it look this time? Um, a little bit more opaque, but still a little translucent. Uh, I'm not sure how to... You... Think of it like a hologram, but with colors. I understand what you mean, I understand. So, you hear a gasp from not only uh, John... But Lena, as she walks into the room and sees you manifest... Terribly sorry. Everyone is frozen now. Couldn't give a cough. <clears throat> John's hand goes to his mouth, his eyes are watering. Ow. 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 Yes. How? How is Ow. this? How is this possible? Your guess is as good as mine. 
I am still to... dead. You don't need to feel guilty. I am dead. He... His eyes are welling with tears, and Lena goes up to him and places a hand on his shoulder, on his shoulder comfortingly. He closes his eyes and seems to feel a bit better from that. Then looks at Klaus. Did, did you bring her back? No. She's always been around. I'm just type of anchor for her right now. When... I, I need to stay inside something or someone in order to stay tasseled to this plane, or else I take... I or else I'm in pain. Rhea speaks up now. Archer and the rest of us, we'd heard rumors of a spirit haunting the place where we used to live. It sounded like my mum and, well, she gives a small smile. You were right. Unfortunately, her mum is, is back. Well, dear, not fully, obviously. She sort of gestures to, you know, the fact that you can see through her. But I do exist, and she looks at Lena. I'd like to first thank you for taking care of them when I could not. <laughs> Lena, n- Lena gives a respectful nod. And while... It hurts me to say that I do not remember much of my life. I remember my death fairly clearly but I don't remember much of my life however I do feel a connection a little bit towards both of you I am Miss, sorry Miss Ambrose I... yes. and this is Lena speaking I am afraid I do not know much about ghosts, but do you are you still able to enjoy the taste of food or drink? It seems that there is much you and my husband and daughter would wish to discuss. And I, I do not wish to admit, wish to misinclude you. I don't know if that's the right word. That's fine. If, Ex- exclude if, if, I do not wish to exclude you from any from any meals if you so desire them. I can taste what Klaus tastes. He is my vessel at the moment, and I can sort of access senses through him. But as for myself, I cannot. Then is there anything you would like me to make for you? I'm already making uh, sandwiches for Klaus and the others. Would that be to your liking? Sandwich is fine. Of course. She goes to make herself busy. She seems very pleasant, John. She's my rock. We, uh... We actually... I'm sorry, I shouldn't be talking about that. I'm sure that's not what you want to hear. I am... I am dead. And there's nothing that can change that. I am just happy that you and Rhea are happy. That is what any mother and wife wants. Um, to be fair, Rhea's still been having some time adjusting. Rhea has the sense to look a little embarrassed by that. Uh, Val looks over at Rhea. She's nice enough, but I appreciate your loyalty, dear. I don't hate her. I know she's nice. It's just... She's not you. (laughs) I do appreciate that. Both of you. It is very nice 
perhaps it is your love for me that has kept me here. I do not know. It is nice to know that I am remembered and still cherished. But you lot don't have to put your lives on hold for me. I am happy as long as you are happy. The plates of food are laid out on the table. Oh! Sorry, uh, Dad, could you tell uh, Mum what you've been working on? She reassesses as you all start eating. Oh, yes! Uh, well, okay, you... I don't know if you remember this, but remember I uh, said I'd always wanted to work on a church? Vaguely. Right. Well, the, uh, well, the shaman, well, the shamans of the three-faced goddess, they're building a, it's said that they're building a new temple right on the border between uh, to go- between the two kingdoms they heard that I'd lived there and well they recently commissioned me to be the architects that's excellent Klaus is that your sect indeed it is and he is beaming with pride that's more funny. like his sandwich dro- dropped for a second because it's like uh oh <laughs> No, I mean, John is beaming with pride. Hmm. Ah. Well, that's good. That's good. What about uh, you, he says to Kun. You don't seem to have been saying much. Yeah, Where you, about you, you from? You see, that Kuh, you, see, you see Kun almost snap out of a trance. Oh. Apologies, what were we talking about? He doesn't I... speak much. That's just his way. Just wondering where you where you're from. Uh, you, I hear that you're a bodyguard to young Klaus here. Indeed. And as long as I, as long as I still draw breath, so will he. They're a bit Don't surprised. Be so dramatic. Yeah, he's a bit surprised by the dramaticness of that statement and uh, young Klaus you I could tell I could tell from the symbols you're wearing you worship you worship the three-faced goddess yourself don't you I am one of their shamans in training yes ah, I see I see uh, I don't suppose you'd be able to put in a good word for me at the with the sect, would you? Uh, Klaus ponders for a second and then knows, well, you seem like a good man, so of course. So, the lot of you spend a a fair time talking, discussing various things. If there's any specific, much like what happened with Whisper, if there's any specific questions you'd like to have Vel ask, feel free to ask them. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, uh, but at one point she kind of gets a little tired manifesting, so she goes back inside Klaus. But she can still hear and participate in the conversation. Of course. It gets, as it's getting late and people looking retiring, uh, Lena, appro- Lena calls out from the kitchen, uh, Excuse me, uh, Belle, could I get your hand with something for a second? I suppose. Uh, Manifest mm. yourself again. This time I'm going to actually physically manifest, as in like full body, opaque, walking on her own. I can do that for 13 minutes. So. Even though he is starting to get used to your presence, John, when he sees that, and even Rhea, just by having seen before, they both grip the seats of their chairs tightly. Walk 
Something is strange. She walks into where Lena is. <laughs> she just manifests Sorry. and walks out. <laughs> could you... I'm peeling, could you help me peel some of those potatoes, please? If that won't be too difficult for you? Uh, Vel kind of looks at her hands and then picks up a peeler and a potato and slowly and almost a little uncoordinatedly starts to peel them. Sure. Lena gently gives you a few gently gives you plug that in. Uh-huh, is that easy? Did it? That's fine. It's like I'm... Uh hello, what's going on? Uh, apparently Jermo and Dad are having a conversation. <laughs> Hi, my dad dad just walked in. I yeah. see. So Lena does give you a few tips just to help your coordination a bit and you fall into a slow but relatively steady rhythm. Uh, did you need to say something to me? I can only hold this form for so long. Of course. Tell me, what did Rhea say about what it was like for her after you died? She got a little obsessive. She didn't know that. And it drove her to the point of trying to find me with that uh, research. I actually knew John a long time before we got married. Five years, I'd say. It was... Mm -hmm. I never had the pleasure of meeting you. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. I think we could have been friends if, if I had. <laughs> but John, he seemed broken by that loss for so long. Very little could bring him out of it. Mm -hmm. You meant the world to him. Sharia, too. I do not know you well, but I know from what you meant to them that you were a, you were a fantastic mother, but... And now she turns to face you and she looks at you directly in the eyes. I know you love John. I know you loved him once as I do, and for that, you have my respect. So from one woman who loves John to another, I am asking, no. I am begging, I will beg if I have to. Leave them both. Say what goodbyes you need to. Give yourselves and them the closure but do not come back please don't make them lose you a second don't make them lose you a second time don't put them through that don't give them false hope for something we both know cannot be Val links I hadn't intended to stay, as there is something I must do, but I had wanted to visit, but then again, that is a little disrespectful towards you, and as I said, you have taken good care of them. I don't ask, please, please understand this is not the words of some jealous wife. It's not for my sake that I ask this, it is for theirs. Rhea has spent... I know that Rhea will never look upon me as she does you, but... That poor girl has spent far too long chasing ghosts. And... John... John only just... has only just managed to bury his past. You stay... And inevitably, all you will do is reopen those old wounds. Make your peace and move on. 
I see. their sake and yours. Mm. Uh, Vel the starts to flick. Vel starts living, to... Sorry, she just says. The living world is not the place for you. Vel starts to flicker. Oh, that's my cue. Excuse me. And she dashes back in and dives into Klaus. Klaus hears in the back of his mind, but only Klaus hears, quiet sobs. And with that, we time skip to the... We uh, time skip to the modern day. Well, oh, hang yeah, on. There's one, there's one last thing before, you know, everything goes. Is that uh, I'm assuming that everyone's leaving. Yes. It's like, and... Oh, we didn't get to see Corin's family. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll cut, get, so, Kuhn... We will get so, to that at another time. Do not so, worry. As ever, so, as everyone leaves, Kuhn is the last one to leave and he stops. And he... And he looks at all. He looks at all three of them before exiting. Don't forget her. And then just shuts the door. And John and Lena says to says to you solemnly. They never will. 